He says, I have found David my servant. Now the Spirit of God is talking here. He says, I have found David my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. I said, oil symbolizes the Spirit. The anointing of the Spirit of God. He's talking about the anointing here. He says, I have found David my servant. With my holy oil have I anointed him. He's not dealing here with oil out of a bottle. That was only symbolic. In the New Testament, we don't have to have it come out of a bottle. We don't have to have it come out of a bottle. Because the one from the bottle was only the symbol. Now that the real one is here, praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost himself is here now. We don't have to wait for the shadows anymore. He says, with my holy oil have I anointed it anointed him with whom my hand shall be established with whom my hand shall be established see when the Lord has anointed you he says the hand of the Lord shall be established through you boy do I like this my am also shall strengthen him the anointing strengthens can you say amen the anointing strengthens you I love verse 22 he says the enemy shall not exact upon him shall not outwit him will never be smarter than you the enemy will not be smarter than you he will not outwit you he will not be able to deceive you because of the anointing did you see that the enemy shall not exact upon him nor the son of wickedness afflict him the anointing causes you to be so tough in the hand of God that the devil cannot afflict you. Look at why am I not afraid of the devil? And I'm casting out devils, laying hands on the sick. Why am I not afraid of the devil? Why don't I fear that maybe these sicknesses that I cast out may come upon me? It's not possible. You see that? Why? Because of the anointing. When I stand before cancer, the cancer has to bow. Why? Because of the anointing. The anointing. He says the son of wickedness shall not afflict him. If you are anointed of God, the son of wickedness shall not afflict you. And if you, you've been afflicted tonight, let that anointing rise within you. Oh, hallelujah. It will destroy that affliction. The word of God shall be true in your life. Say Amen. Yes, he says, the enemy shall not exact upon him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. Boy, look at this, I like it. He says, and I will beat down his foes before his face. The anointing, glory to God. God says, because he has anointed you, he says, he will beat down your enemies before your face. He says, I'll beat down his foes before his face. See why you don't have to struggle with any adversary, with anybody who's against you? You never have to worry. God will beat them down before you. An anointed man or woman cannot be defeated. Look to the Bible. Everyone who respected the anointing never lost a battle. Never. It says verse 23, And I will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him. He says, I'll plague those who hate you. See, you don't have to bother about anybody who hates you. He says, I'll plague them. There'll be trouble in their house. <laughs> God says I'll trouble them I'll plague them did you ever read of Abimelech and Abraham Abimelech took Abraham's wife was Abraham worried mm -mm. he wasn't worried he just relaxed the Bible says suddenly God started by shutting the wombs of all the women in the house including the animals he shut their wombs everyone both man and beast became barren that's what god started with the next thing he struck them with sickness until abimelech cried out why god now entered his bedroom in the night and the man thought he was dreaming bible shows us it was no ordinary dream god entered there and said abimelech you don't restore that man his wife i'll kill you god said it to the man and the man said lord he told me she was his sister. Please forgive me. God said, nevertheless, restore the man his wife now. And ask him to pray for you, for he's a prophet of God. 
See why you never have to worry? He says, I'll beat down your foes before you and plague those who hate you. Tell somebody, relax. <laughs> Tell two people, cheer up. Cheer up. Cheer up. The word works. Cheer up. Cheer up. You can never be defeated. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what the anointing does for you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Look at the next one. Verse 24. But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. And in my name shall his horn be exalted. I will set. Oh boy. This is beautiful. I will set his hand also in the sea. And his right hand in the rivers. Now sea refers to nations of men. He's dealing with multitudes and multitudes of people. He says, I will set your hand over nations. Rivers refers to cities. So when you're dealing with this in the scripture, you immediately understand what God's talking about. Look at it again. Verse 25. I will set his hand also in the sea and his right hand in the rivers. See what God will do for you. He shall cry unto me, Thou art my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Say thank you Lord Jesus. See, the anointing keeps you. The anointing protects you. Are you hearing me? The anointing protects you. But if you walk away from it, you live like an ordinary man. You remember Samson? When the anointing departed from Samson, he was an ordinary man. The Bible says, though he shook himself as at other times, he was an ordinary man. The anointing was gone from him. But God wants the anointing to remain in your life. Hallelujah. See, in these dark days, our light has to shine ever more brightly. And we have to function in the anointing. We cannot walk or live without it. When that anointing, you notice the first part that we read, he said, I shall be anointed. He said, my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. That's a wild ox. When the anointing is fresh in your life, there's a wildness about you. Oh yeah. There's a wildness about you. There's a violence in the spirit about your life. You don't just take whatever comes. When the anointing is fresh in your life, you do not say whatever will be, will be. You don't take any nonsense from the devil. Oh, how old are you? 55. What's the problem? You got hypertension. 55. Hypertension. You born again? Yeah. Do you have the Holy Spirit? Yeah. That should be the end of hypertension. Sure. But you know, the people of the world will tell you, Oh, well, you're 55. Well, a man like you should expect anything. At 55, you may just have hypertension. No way! If any man be in Christ... He is a new creation. All things are passed away and all things are become new. You're not an ordinary person. And you know, when you take the word of God seriously, it produces results in you. The Bible says the word became flesh and dwelt among us. In the same way today, as you receive the word of God, it becomes flesh in your body. And you know, when you have faith in God, never be ashamed of your faith. Your faith will put you over. Are you hearing me? Never be ashamed of your faith. Never be ashamed of your believing. Some people have faith in God and then after a while, they give up and become ashamed. No, don't give up. Your faith will put you over. The Bible says, this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Faith is the victory. It overcomes the world. It overcomes the world and its system. And when you hold on to God's word, to God's promise, everything else may fight against you. Everything else may tell you it's not going to work. No. Listen to the voice of faith only. The more unbelief tries to attack you, the more you say, I refuse to fear. I refuse to fear. I refuse to give up. I refuse to fear. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. 
Tell somebody anything is possible. Anything is possible. Anything is possible. Say, look at me. Look at me. Anything is possible. My heart. My heart is open to the Spirit of God. Anything is possible. You know, you see, God is so great and yet so gentle. Hallelujah. I said, God is so great and yet so gentle. You know, sometimes this precious one.